Let's gather and let's stand. in the house of the Lord. Say amen with me this morning. All right. So our next song is going to be our greeting song. So you can feel free to greet each other during this time. Uh, it's going to be a song called What a Friend. Our tithes and offerings box is back in the back here. It's in front of the sound booth where it used to be. Uh, so if you brought uh, tithes or offerings or prepared to do that, you can do that at this time as well. Let's sing together. <laughs> I 
If you got here soon enough, you saw the countdown was the back-to-school countdown. So we've got students coming tomorrow. Aren't you all excited? No. I, I'm, I'm taking. No, the students aren't excited? Okay. Well, whatever. I'm going to let you stay seated for the first one of these, but it really seems like that's a bad deal because the name of the hymn is Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Okay? Now, I don't know why I'm going to let you stay seated other than I'm just a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. You don't go there. It's okay. Roll it. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Let die his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall be. Thank you for standing up. Amen. Onward, Christian soldier. Here we go.
be seated. Thank you. There they go. Kids down. There they go. Woo. That's all right. Uh, just a couple of, of uh, housekeeping things for you. Uh, out in the foyer, we have some uh, the uh, ballots for this week. Make sure you vote on Tuesdays, the primary, if you haven't already voted. And uh, also, there are some petitions for those of you that are in. How many of you live in Lachiel County? How many of you pay too much taxes? <laughs> well, there's a whole new county trying to form called Springs County, okay? And there's a petition if you'd like to join that county, which is lower property taxes than a lot. And it's from everything from 34th Street West will be in Springs County. So wouldn't that be good? How, you, how much you pay taxes there are too much, huh? So anyway, uh, next week, Tim Martins, who is the initiator of this, will come to our church service, and I'll give him about five minutes to tell you about it, and then afterwards he'll be around to answer questions for you. But there's a petition out there if you think that your taxes are too high and you'd like to be a part of this new county. Uh, also, if you are visiting with us, please fill out a, com a communication card and uh, leave it with me. And uh, it, on the back, there's a place to put your prayer requests. We really want to be praying for whatever's going on in your life, and a lot of people need prayer, and they come to church because they want to connect with God and and have people pray for them and we want to pray for you and uh, if you notice that you got a prayer list when you came in you know this is we pray over this all the time and all of our members have this so this is our prayer list and if you'll if you will take a communication card fill that out for us and on the back put your prayer request it'll go in our big prayer list in our prayer group and people will be praying over whatever you have going on and uh, God will answer. I probably believe God is a prayer answering God. How many of y'all believe that? And uh, I've had some answered this in the last month. I mean, good prayers that were answered. And and uh, we're praying for uh, Sydney. She's having some stuff coming up. But it's been moved to Tuesday, right, Sydney? So be praying for her. And you can read about that on the prayer list as well. But I want to speak for the next few minutes on uh, speaking for Jesus in an unashamed way. And uh, as, as we sang those songs and, you know, uh, talking about the cross of Jesus and being a soldier of the cross and that sort of thing, our war is not with bullets and guns, but our war is, is taking the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ out into a lost and dying world and helping people stay out of hell when they die. We love people, and we I don't care what color, what race, what creed. I don't care what they identify themselves as their gender. None of that matters. What matters is I know that my Savior loves them very much. And my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, wants to take them to heaven one day when they die. And, and our mission is not to try to convert people at the sign of the, you know, the cross or the or with a knife or a gun, but to actually win them over with the love of God. Because you know, the Bible says that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever what believeth in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. So that's our mission. And I thank God that it's a mission of peace and, and not of, of bloodshed and war. And uh, God wants you to know him if you don't know him in a personal way. He wants to, he wants to know you intimately on a personal basis. And uh, part of you as a Christian, how many of you out here, well, you don't have to raise your hand, but know this. If you identify yourself as a Christian, part of your mission is to open your mouth and talk about Jesus. But so many Christians are scared to death to do that. They're, they have locked jaws. You can talk about anything else, you know, but when it comes to talking about Jesus, it's so hard for them to stand up and, and speak for him. Uh, there's a survey done a few years back of why people like you, Christians, don't witness, and 50% said it was their biggest fear on how, their biggest fear was how other people would react to them, might reject them as a friend, that sort of thing, and might offend them and that kind of thing. 25% they felt they didn't know enough to share the gospel adequately, 
And the other 25% were just too busy or their lives were, weren't consistent they, or they didn't think their lives were consistent enough to witness to others. But the bottom line is this. We're supposed to be witnesses for our Lord and telling people about our friends. And, and there's a direct correlation with you. And them. People think, God's mad at me. He's, he wants to be, destroy me. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he wants you in heaven with him. He sent his own son to keep you out of that awful place called hell. And remember, hell was not created for people like you and me. It was not created for humans. You say, what? Yeah, hell wasn't created for humans. Hell was created for those fallen angels, Lucifer and all his hordes that rebelled against God. And yet, a whole lot of people like you and me will be going there if they don't know our Lord Jesus. So our mission is a mission of mercy, mission of love, to try to find people that don't know Jesus yet and, and tell them the good news. See, gospel means what? Good news. The good news is heaven's free. <laughs> Hell's hot, but Jesus saves. You don't have to go to hell because he heaven is real and it's free. It's a free gift that God offers every human being. And, and our job is to go out into this, this wonderful news with people. You might remember from last week the scripture we looked at Romans 1, 16, for I am not ashamed of the, what? The gospel of Christ. Read it with me. God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also the Greek. Remember, when, when, when the gospel was first preached, it was only preached to Israel. And I'm thank, thankful that our, the gospel came to us. And it came because Christians like you, got unashamed of the gospel and they went out and preached the, the good news to people out there in the world. We were in uh, a place, a, a store down in rural, uh, I won't name the, the name of it, but down in Crystal River a couple days ago. And uh, there was a young lady waiting on my wife and her name was Brandy. And I, I thought of her name and I said, that's a nice name. And, and, I, and I, I remembered that old song from the 70s and 80s. Remember that, Brandy, you were a fine girl. Remember that? And I sang that little, short little part to her, and, and she, I said, you probably heard that a million times, hadn't you, Brandy? She goes, shook her head and rolled her eyes, yeah, I heard that. And my parents gave me that name, and they were both drunks, and they, they don't love me very much, and I've never had a relationship with them. I thought, how sad, you know, and, and immediately God's Spirit spoke to me and said, this is your mission today. Tell Brandy that I love her. <laughs> so I told her, I said, Brandy, I said, I've got good news for you. I said, there's a God in heaven. And he loves you very much. And he, he's a heavenly father that won't abandon you. And she says, well, I've tried to have a relationship with my parents, and, but they just would never reciprocate. And they, we just don't have a good relationship. I said, but there's a God in heaven that is the wonderful fa heavenly father. And he thinks you're cool. In fact, he loves you a whole lot. And he, he just wanted me to tell you that. And she kind of turned away for a minute. And I couldn't tell if she was, you know, tearing up. said that today. She says, I've been wondering. Does anybody in the whole earth, in the world, care about Brandy? <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah, Brandy, God loves you a whole lot, and he's got a wonderful plan for your life. And I gave her a little, my card, book business card, which has a, a, I purposely did that because my business card on the back of it, it has the Roman road, which is a, a gospel presentation on how to get to heaven. I said, Brandy, I said, here's my card on the back. It'll tell you how to how to go to heaven, you know, and you can, and you meet this guy that loves you very much. And, and she goes, she looked at the front. She said, you're a pastor? I guess. She goes, where's your church? I said, Gainesville. She goes, well, that's a long way. And I, live I said, yes, ma'am, but there's good ones nearby. And I named a few nearby that she could attend. And so Miss Bonnie and I, before we left the line, we said, now, Brandy, is there anything we can pray about for you? And she goes, yeah, there is. She says, pray for me because I'm here all day long and I'm trying to raise three children. Didn't, didn't mention if she had a husband or not, but she just said, I'm, I'm just struggling. And so Miss Bonnie and I said, we'll pray for you, honey. And uh, so we left her and made a new friend. But, but see, we were bold enough to talk to her about our Lord and unashamedly sharing. Because, it's, listen, it's good news. It's like a, if, you're, if a, your neighbor's house is burning down, are you going to let them burn or are you going to try to get them out? What are you going to do? If your house is na neighbor's house, what are you going to do? Are you going to are you going to try to get them and sharing Jesus, speaking about Jesus, not ashamed today? I want you to take it personally. As a, if you're a believer, take this personally. This is a personal uh, message from God to you today, and we're in a three part series on living for Christ, speaking for Christ, and standing for Christ. And we, last week we looked at live uh, standing for Christ, but 
what we need to do and what I want to do is help you overcome your spiritual silence, okay? We live in a, in a world today, and particularly in our, in our more liberal communities, they like to silence people like you. They don't want you to talk about Christ. I remember years ago at Santa Fe Community College, my, my first 100 and 200 level classes, many, many times we were, we were stuffed <laughs> in and, and we unashamedly were able to share our faith there, even though many of the professors shut us down and silenced us. But I'm hoping today, good news. I mean, it's a, it's a get out of jail free card. <laughs> Isn't that pretty cool? Wouldn't you like to give your friend a get out of jail free card and they could escape hell? Yeah. Get out of that burning house that, that, that we described a moment ago. Uh, but in order to, to overcome your silence, you're going to have to overcome some walls that are thrown up there many times by ourselves and sometimes by others but the, uh, the five uh, there's five barriers to witnessing that you're going to need to overcome and the first one is fear in reality where does fear come from the devil he's the one that puts fear in us you know the lord says i haven't given you the spirit of fear but of love and a power and a sound mind and so fear we have to go to so fear is satanic really now there's some good fears i mean I, I don't put my, my finger in an electrical socket. I've got a, 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 a pulls up backwards, you know. Don't jump off the house with an umbrella. Make sure if you jump off a high place, have a parachute. Now, that fear is a good fear, isn't it? Fear of putting your, you know, God instills good kind of fears in us. The fear of, of you know, falling off a high place and that kind of thing. That's good stuff. The wrong kind of fear is unhealthy fear. The kind that silences you when, when in reality that's just Satan trying to keep you from telling your friend about Jesus. So we got to overcome that kind of fear. Uh, second thing we've got to overcome is ignorance. Some Christians are just ignorant. <laughs> you know, they don't understand that it's their responsibility, it's their mission to share good news with their friends. I mean, it ought to be obvious, but a whole lot of churches, the best kept secret really in Gainesville is how to, how that right, Doc? Best kept secret is how people can get to heaven. The fact that God's not wanting to destroy them, but He loves them very much. And, and they can know they have eternal life. See, people don't know that you can know that. Listen, I know I have eternally with him in a brand new body because he promises it. You say, how do you know that? Because maybe we haven't been in a church like this that's told you the truth. Sometimes it's just apathy. Who cares? <laughs> I don't want, I don't care what's going on with the rest of them. Listen, don't be apathetic. Be conscious and conscientious about the fact we need to open our mouths and share Jesus. Sometimes it's introspection. We, we, we just, oh, I don't, my life is just so, I, I'm not that far along in my Christian life, and I, you know, I've got all these problems. Listen, everybody has problems. Every Christian has problems. Being a Christian does not make you perfect. All that, what, what becoming a Christian makes you is just being forgiven. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And how many of you think it's a good idea that we could get, should get forgiven for some of the stuff we've done in our past? Of course, none of you have probably ever done anything bad. But I tell you what, everybody needs forgiveness, okay? And, and God offers forgiveness, but it's not automatic. God doesn't automatically just blame you. Forgiveness is available, but it's not automatic. It's something that you have to receive and, and believe in. But, but if we think about ourselves too much, we just turn, turn the thoughts inward all the time. We don't think about people outside uh, that are outside of our lives. And listen, you're not ever going to be perfect in this life. You say, I'm going to wait till I get spiritual. Listen, <laughs> you're, you're a long way, and I'm a long way from where we ought to be. But, but I know this. I'm not where I used to be. So I'm on the road. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, and that's what you just need to be doing, what you're supposed to be doing, and, and let God fix those things. And don't keep your mouth, or don't let him make you close your mouth. The devil will use that. And say, oh, you're, look at you. you. You're just not, you're a brand-new Christian. Look at your life. It's been all messed up, or, or maybe you've been in the faith a long time, and you've, had problems with your marriage or something. You see, the enemy will say, you're not qualified to tell people about Jesus. And that not only qualified, you're called and you're commissioned to tell people about Jesus. So the introspection, then a whole lot of Christians are just Jesus. Listen, I'm busy. I'm a busy man. My teachers and, and staff here, are we busy, Faith? <laughs> it's busy, isn't it? If you're talking about busyness, a church that has a school is 100,000 times more busy than churches that don't have schools. And we have two schools we, we fund full-time, you know, so we're, we're busy. But see, we still shouldn't be too busy to share the gospel in, in your life if you're not careful. 
you will, you will have so many things that, are, that make you too busy to share the gospel. So there's some of the barriers you're going to have to overcome in your life. And you remember, I shared with you last week, what brought me out of the... I was a young kid, 15, 16 years old, Cocoa Beach High School, and I had rededicated my life to Christ, and I said, I want to be a witness, and I was following along behind some, some guys that were in their early 20s. They were on fire for God, preaching and sharing their faith. They could get out there and play tackle football with no pads with us, fight and carry on, you know, like boys and men should do. And yet they were strong believers. And, and boy, I fell in behind them and started, I'm going to be one of those kind of guys, Mr. Phil. I said, I'm going to be a witness like James and some of those other guys were. And I started carrying a red New Testament like they did. I was copying them. And that red New Testament would stick out of my pocket a little bit. And it looked like a pack of Winston cigarettes, really. It didn't look like a Bible, you know. And, and this kid in Cocoa Beach named Ted, he pulled it out of my pocket. Give me one of them cigarettes. Bill Keith, you're one of them religious fanatics. Hey, Bill. And he started just blowing it at, just loud, you know. And, and I had to, at that point, I had to make up my mind. Am I going to be ashamed of the Lord or am I going to stand up? And I learned through that experience that I'm going to, stand, I'm going to boldly proclaim Jesus. And I don't care what people think. I don't care if people think I'm a religious nut. Listen, I might be a nut, but I'm fastened to the right bolt, okay? And the bolt <laughs> is Jesus, you know. And, and, and I hope that we, we'll all get a little bit overboard when it comes to sharing our faith and we'll get over being ashamed of Jesus. Uh, about that time, my dad was called down to uh, Cape Canaveral. And uh, I'm going to jump ahead a few slides and I'll come back to that one. But this is uh, town of Cape Canaveral, 1967. And uh, Cape Canaveral, how many of y'all have been on those cruises out of Port Canaveral? You know where that is? You go up to that bridge down to 528 Causeway, it's about five miles or so. There were about 4,000 homes in that town. And my, my father was sent there by our Lord uh, to, to minister to that area. And it's, it's bordered on this side by the Atlantic, on the inside by the Banana River. And uh, we were called there to, to be uh, ministers, you know, and, and, and really call from Gainesville to that section. That's the Cape Kennedy there. And you, that circle is the area of ministry that my father was called to. And it was called Cape Canaveral Baptist Mission. And it was a mission church from the First Baptist of Merritt Island back in those days. And uh, back in the middle of the moonshots when Saturn Fives and all the Apollo missions, that's, we were there right in the middle of that. We were there for the moon, all the moonshots. And uh, my dad was led to reach every home in that area, every home. And what we did during the moonshots is we'd go to the Port Canaveral campground. We'd set up a survey booth. Survey, we had this little, uh, you know, like a pop-up camper. We put a little uh, awning out over the front and a couple tables. We gave away free water and free coffee, and all they had to do was come to take the, the uh, survey put out by Campus Crusade for Christ. And in that survey, you, you, what you're trying to do is, is gain an opportunity to share the gospel. And as a young teenager, I was on that group. I, I think I'm sitting on one of those tables there right in that picture. I'm not sure, but I was involved in that the whole time. And we would share the gospel unashamedly with thousands of people. And people would come and sit down and take the survey, and then we'd ask their permission, can we, you know, can we share with you a little bit further? And they'd say, sure. And about one out of four people would ask Christ to be their Savior and Lord. Now, where are those people today? I have no idea. That's in 1967, 60, 68, right in there. Uh, but I know this. Some of those will be in heaven one day when we get there. And it happened because a few teenagers like me and our father, who was our pastor, and, and a few other adults took it seriously that we need to unashamedly share the gospel of Christ. And uh, in that time, in that town in, in Cape Canaveral, get back to the next slide, we visited over 4,000 homes over a period of three years. 4,000 homes. We went door to door sharing the gospel, using that survey, but we would share the gospel when they would let us. And, and you know, I have no idea how many of those people are going to be in heaven. I don't know. But I know this. We obeyed the commission that God gave us. We, he, we did what he said to do. And I'm thankful for that. We've got a lot of men right here in our church and, and ladies that helped put out Bibles at the UF at Santa Fe. These are some of our Gideons at the University of Florida out there. Every year they're out there passing out New Testaments, year in and year out, and they, they pass out 
five to 10,000 Bibles every year in, around the campuses. And uh, they're unashamedly sharing their faith with others. Now, now is the time for you to move on to Christian maturity. You see, when you were a baby Christian, you were just starting, you know, you didn't know much about it, you didn't know how to share your faith. But see, you're past that. Most of you are, are past that point now, and you need to move on to Christian maturity. When a couple gets married, what's the natural result normally? If you can have children, what happens? Start having babies, don't you, at some point? Now, some are planned, and you say, you know, they, we, we're going to plan and plan it out, you know, and, and uh, some of you have got some wonderful families. And see, it's a natural thing. Y'all have, what, three and one on the way, right? Three or four, four, four and one on the way, you know, and God's good. He blesses us with when we're mature and able to have children. It's just a normal progression. And uh, see, a mature Christian is a reproducer, not in the sense that we reproduce physical babies like they've got their coming along, you know, but we, we produce spiritual children. If we're mature and we're doing what we're supposed to do, it's a natural thing. It just happens naturally because if we unashamedly share our faith, some people are going to respond and believe, and that's just what we're supposed to do. Just, it's just a natural thing. Here's what John 15 says. Jesus said, yes, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can't do nothing. When you produce much fruit, you're my true disciples, and this brings great, great glory to my Father. See, God wants you to produce fruit. He wants you to produce fruit. Now, that's jumping down to verse 8 if you're trying to get, stay with me, Brian. Uh, think about it. When we... <laughs> When we start having spiritual children, our family grows pretty quick. I don't have any clue, really, in our lifetime. I, have, I don't have them all written down. I couldn't tell you how many people we've led to Christ. But I know this. As a teenager, I've got one Bible that I had that I wrote names down, and I have a whole page of people that I led to Christ that year. Now, I won't see them again until we get on the other side. I won't see them until eternity. But I know this. I was, I was obedient and I unashamedly opened my mouth and I spoke for him. Not, that doesn't make me some super saint. That just makes me an obedient believer. See, and, and for you to be an obedient believer, you've got to grow up and, and, and mature because God is building a kingdom one soul at a time, you know, one person at a time. And as you become a part of this great mission and you, you tell people, imagine, there are more Christians alive right now on the earth than have ever existed in history. You didn't know that, did you? More Christians alive right now. And you know where the, the heart of Christianity is right now? It used to be the West. It used to be America and, you know, Canada and South America. Guess where it is now? Central Africa in, in Asia. The most Christians are coming to Christ in Africa and Central Asia right now. You can go on Google and, and Google the, the Pew Research on Christianity or Biblical Christianity Worldwide. And you'll see the, the research, and it, it's mind-boggling how many Christians are alive right now and how that Christianity is growing at a rapid pace. And it's growing one soul at a time. When somebody tells their friend about Christ and they receive Jesus and they become a Christian, they're added to the kingdom of God. They're in, the, they're in that number. I, I just think about all the people over the years that uh, some of these people, how many of y'all ever taught Sunday school? Raise your hand if you've been. Look, look around for a minute. All those little kids that you taught in Sunday school. See, a lot of them are going to be in the kingdom of God one day because of you speaking the, the, the word to them. Anybody here been a Gideon? I think our Gideon, there's one back there. There's some others will be at the next service. We have, how many we have, Brother Don? About 12 Gideons here? I think we have 12 that are members of our church. We probably have more Gideons in our church than any church in this part of Florida. See, they unashamedly have handed out New Testaments. And in those New Testaments... There's a gospel presentation. And who knows, over, over our lifetime, how many souls, one at a time, have come to the kingdom because they unashamedly shared Jesus with them. And Brian, you've been to the mission field how many times now? Seven times, you know, you've been all over, been to Africa, been all over. He went down there when the Ebola was happening. I mean, he's been all over the world sharing the gospel. And, and see, he doesn't have any clue how many, because they spoke to a lot of people. But one soul at a time, you know, unashamedly sharing their faith. Uh, some of you worked in Awanas, and you, how many of you ever worked in Awanas? Look around. 
those little boys and girls that you purchased. They, they, they took it seriously, and their lives were changed, and they became great leaders in their own right. And some of them are pastors now, and pastors' wives, and missionaries, because you took the time to unashamedly speak about the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's time that we, we mature up. But see, many Christians just never grow up. Many Christians are spiritual babies. They come to church, they want to be fed pablum and milk. You know, I want to be entertained and I want to sit. Listen, the job of the Christian is not to stay in diapers and drink milk the rest of your life, okay? Many Christians just never grow up. Look what Hebrews says, Hebrews chapter 6. So let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. You don't need further instruction about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And so, God willing, we will move forward to further understanding. See, as a Christian, you need to, you need to grow up, okay? Quit being a spiritual baby. Get the diapers off. Put your big girl britches and your big boy britches on, Okay? And let's start, let's start uh, getting some, something besides milk in us. 1 Corinthians 3, 1, Paul said, I had to feed you with milk and not with solid food because you weren't ready for anything stronger and you still aren't ready. <laughs> Let me get my chains up there for you. There we go. See, the, Christ, the Corinthian church, so many people hold up the Corinthians as great Christians. So listen, they were so carnal and worldly. Corinth in that day was like what we when we think about Key West and you think about uh, Las Vegas or just all you know and a lot of uh, how they on it at spring break and party until they drop. That's how Corinth was. Corinth was a seaport city in which it was a lot of prostitution and stuff going on. They had temples of prostitution there in Corinth. Yeah, that wasn't Christian. That was pagan. But they you go to the temple and pay the prostitutes and do your thing. You know. So Paul was winning these people to Christ. They were coming out of that wicked lifestyle and coming to Jesus. And he said, I'm still having to feed you with milk. He said, time for you to grow up. Come on. Get off the bye-bye, baby. Quit sucking your bye-bye. Come on. In fact, my, my wife's favorite saying sometimes, she goes, bye-bye, suck a baby. <laughs> How you say it? Suck a bye-bye, baby. Suck a bye-bye, baby, you know. <laughs> It really, that's what's that? Hey, go up. Come on. Get off your duff. Get, your, get them diapers off. Pull your britches on. Big boy pants and big girl pants. And get about the mass family and your friends. You want to keep them out of that awful place. Because once you get there, you're never coming back. There's no escape from hell. There's some religions teach you can buy people out of hell, pray them out. No. <laughs> you're there. You're done. And it's an it's a everlasting punishment. And nobody, no human should have to go there. Unless they want to. You remember the one guy that, that uh, the grocery store manager years ago when I was a teenager, I was just bumbling along trying to share the gospel as a teenager. And I was a kid to them. I was 19 years old. They were, you know, in their 40s or whatever, older and mature, you know, and tried to share one. And, they, and the one manager said, I don't want to go to heaven. I want to go to hell. And I want to be the devil's fireman and stoke the fires. And I just backed up and said, okay, <laughs> so be it. But, but remember... I told you, you know, and I, and I asked you if you wanted Jesus. You said no, and I, I don't know what happened to him. I know he's dead now, and I believe he probably got his wish. You know, I think he probably in hell, he probably lifted up his eyes, being in torment, but not because I didn't care. Not because a 19-year-old kid didn't care enough to tell him about that awful place and tell him that Jesus loved him. Listen, if you care about your friends and your family, you care about this lost world, you care about the condition of our world, you're going to get your cotton-picking diapers off and you're going to pull your big girl britches on and your big boy britches on and you're going to start talking about Jesus unashamedly. We need to do it, guys and girls. And see, your choice, grow up and witness or backslide. That's the only choice you have in a Christian life. You say, well, that soul winning and that kind of stuff, that's the preacher's job. No, it's not. I'll do it, but it's not just my, my job is to prepare you to do it. The Bible says the, the job of the, the pastors and the elders is to equip you for the work of the ministry. And so what I'm doing today is I'm trying to you to, to speak about Jesus in an unashamed way. Matthew, here's our marching orders, remember. 
Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. And that slide kind of got cut off there, but uh, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever, whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Thank you, brother. You see, we're not only just to preach the gospel, but we're to make disciples, make people bring them to Christ and then turn them into little soldiers for the Lord that carry this wonderful gospel message. See, we don't carry bullets that hurt people. We carry the gospel bullets that save people, keep them out of hell. You know, and There's a big difference. See, some religions want to kill you if you don't believe. That's not, that's not how this, this works. And I know that the Catholic Church did a lot of horrible things like that in the early, in the, you know, the Middle Ages. And the Islamicists are doing it now. Listen, that's not the way to convert people. The God I know is a God of love and mercy, and I'm so thankful that he loves you enough to keep you out of hell by sending his son for you. He sent Jesus on a rescue mission. Acts 1.8 says this, But you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You see, the, the early Christians were there in Israel, and Jerusalem was a the capital and the center of it. So they started there and they went, then they went to the next county. They went to the, the bigger section and finally to the whole country of Israel. Then they went everywhere preaching the word and telling people this wonderful, awesome, life-saving message we call, and the Bible calls, the gospel, the good news. And Paul said this, and pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right word so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that is the good news for the Jews and the Gentiles alike. You see, it doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done. It doesn't matter if you're Jew, Gentile. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, what's your gender, what's your, your race. None of that matters. What matters is there's a God in heaven that loves you a whole lot. And he went to great expense to give you eternal life forever so you could spend eternity with him. And all he asks in return is, is that you bow your knee to him and ask Jesus to be your Savior and Lord. And you begin to follow him and, and you begin to tell other people, like yourself, about that wonderful good news. And you know what will happen? You will grow spiritually. You, you won't have diapers anymore. <laughs> you'll have the big girl, big boy britches on. And you'll become a, a wonderful, gospel-caring believer like Paul and Silas and Don Bowles, my dad, you know, Jimbo, and a bunch of others I could name right here right now, Martha, uh, Mindy. A lot of these have picked up their, they picked up the baton and started carrying it, and they've become soldiers of carrying the gospel in their own right. And remember, it's not a gospel of bullets that hurt people, but it's the gospel of great news, the good news of the, the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you haven't met Jesus, please meet him before you leave. Because <laughs> I tell you what, I w I've been walking with him a long time now, and I wouldn't trade it for a bazillion dollars of what God has done with my life and my family's life and, and uh, the, the good things God has done for me. And One time in the, in the uh, scriptures, Moses had some people, you know, his father-in-law and some of the others, that they were out there in the wilderness, and he said, come follow, follow along with us, and we'll do you good. <laughs> That's what I'm sharing with you today. Follow along with us, and we'll do you good. You see, this is, our church is a family, really. When I come here every, every week, it's like a family reunion to see my brothers and sisters. You know, I don't get to see you all week, but I get to see you. And, and of course, we have our little welcome time, and, and that's just the time so we can say hey to our brothers and sisters. We're all kin, <laughs> because Jesus is our Heavenly Father. He's, he's our common denominator. So if that's you today, if, that's, if, if you want that, if you want Jesus in your life, I'm going to offer what we call the sinner's prayer. Prayer is not magical. It's just a way to help you ask Christ to come into your life. And let's all bow our heads and close our eyes. If you're here today and you want to be a part of the family of God and you want to accept that gospel, just pray something like this in your heart. You just talk to God while I talk out loud and, and talk to him. Pray a prayer like this. Lord Jesus. I love you, and I know you love me because the preacher told me this morning you did, and, and I've heard other Bible verses, and you said in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world, I'm part of the world. So, Lord, today, I believe that gospel. I believe that you came to the earth, you died 
on that cruel cross. You paid for my sins. And when they killed you, they put you in the grave. And three days later, you came back alive. Lord, I believe that. And I accept you today as my Savior, my Lord. And from here on out, I'm going to be on your team and I'm going to try my best to share this good news with others as long as I live. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you for coming today. And, and as we said before, if you, if, you don't, if you would do it for me, fill out one of the communication cards before you leave and so I know that you had come. If you have a prayer request, which we really want to pray about for you, put it on the back and we'll, we'll be holding you up in prayer. But uh, Yes, sir. So, go ahead. Thank you, sir. I was looking at who was talking. I couldn't. I thought it was Mr. Dom, but I wasn't matching the voice. Go ahead, brother, brother Robin. Lead us in a closing prayer, Robbie, and we're going to ask you to move on out because we've got to wipe the tables down. The next group's going to be coming in in a minute, so we'll let you all move, move on to the back if you could. But, Robbie, lead us in a prayer. And if you want to stay behind and talk to me, I'm going to be here for you. So let's stay behind type invitation if you want to talk to me.